right. The inaugural Newsfeed Oscars prediction party. Nersena, Ali Jan, Philip, our movie buffs are with us. Nersena first, best picture and why? I think Little Women should win uh, because we need more feel good movies about real women and what they do and how they react in real life. I think Greta Gerwig did a great job. I think Parasite should win um, because it will mean a lot for diversity on the Oscars. It will be a historical one for a foreign film to win Best Picture. Uh, Aljan. I think 1917 will win because it's an ambition, epic in scope and budget. But actually, my favorite movie of the year is not even on the short list. Uh, the Farewell, which is, you know, a Mandarin language yeah. movie uh, directed by, a, you know, novice female director. But it failed to reach, uh, you know, the short list. And I think it's going to be one of the missed opportunities in the history of Oscars. You know, field, female director, racial diversity. It's interesting that as well, because the, this year, this Oscars season, this movie awards season, we've had an issue with diversity, starting with the BAFTAs. Mm -hmm. Do you think there... <laughs> Is there an issue in the film industry with diversity in Rosanna? Well, are we surprised? Uh, he's, it, it, it has been going on like this for all, I mean, from the beginning. Um, we had Oscars so white, we had these kind of social movements, and yeah. yet nothing seems to have changed. I haven't thought about it, it would seem. Yeah, I mean, look at the best director category. It's all male. It's abhorrent. I mean, why not? They say that Oscars are the most diverse this year, but we can't see it on the nominations. Well, look, this year has been a lot of challenges. Yes, they're the most diverse this year, but it's again a shorter season. I was explaining earlier that, for example, there were three, over 300 movies, and all of them sent screeners to the 5,000 members of the Academy. They all have to watch all of them. Um, they don't watch all of them, so it all goes with all the buzz that's there. Um, and a lot of the diversity issues have always been blamed on the best director and the acting categories. I think many people didn't watch all those films and maybe you know a lot should be changed in how the nomination process happens and how they market the movies and how those movies are made to for make everybody to watch everything i mean Alejan, we don't want sort of diversity for diversity's sake these films need to be worth getting the nods right oh, definitely agree with that and i think you know at the core of this problem lies you know whenever a female filmmaker or a black or asian filmmaker goes to the producers most often than not they hear uh, this same uh, answer, which is, oh, great story. Would you be interested in changing the cast to, you know, uh, white characters? So, but actually, in the past, you know, more recently with movies like Black Panther and whatnot, mm -hmm. they're being proven wrong, actually. Yeah, but still, yeah. I think the prejudice of white Hollywood is they think multiracial films will not sell. And actually, in this time that we're, we're living through currently, when everyone is so conscious of identity, mm -hmm. This argument seems a bit redundant to me. I mean, I think Oscar season sort of films, award shows seem a bit redundant to me. I don't know if anyone agrees that Oscars are kind of <laughs> passe. I don't, I, I'm not interested in what, uh, what's being said. I do it for political reasons. I think for people to campaign, for 5,000 people to say, hey, watch our films, and then they select which ones are the best ones, because campaigning always begins early. It begins with um, Venice, Tulliride, Toronto, and so that whole process, that whole horse race, is quite exciting to watch. You see who will make it to the end. So many hundreds of films got left out this year, but the ones that made it went the distance. It's just that whole process of marketing and seeing who makes it to the very, very end is what I find exciting. It's a money issue though, isn't it? It's a marketing issue. It's not necessarily an, an art issue. I mean, we're all able to make our own opinions on these films nowadays, and social media has given us that space where we can all tell everyone else our opinions. I'm not so sure that I'm interested in what some guy sitting in a room are telling me about what a film should be. It's not really fair. If it's all about money and your reach, then how is it fair? Is there a possibility that we should have some kind of open, I don't know, voting on these films? I, I don't want it to become like X Factor or, you know, The Voice, but... I mean, that's pretty... I mean, to be honest, you know, a select few is deciding everything, you know, on, on the Oscars and, uh, you know, BAFTAs, whatever. I would be all up for a more, you know, audience-oriented uh, awarding system. But having said that, though, when you think of um, preview, you know, movie previews where some studios force this uh, sneak preview system on filmmakers, and that's not no good either. Like, mm. so I'm not quite sure about that either. Like, audience, like, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But we do have those. We have the People's Choice Awards, which is one for... Okay. But no. <laughs> Again, another one that I would pay no attention to. And also, I think the other thing as well, 
we've given these people this authority because they're experts. These are filmmakers and they've, they've created this kind of art. So we should, I guess, give up a little bit of our uh, of, of, of credit to them for being able to make the right decisions. Because at the end of the day, this is an industry body award. It's basically cinematographers voting for cinematographers. It's editors voting for editors. It's actors voting for actors. So it's, up, it's their preference. It's their choice. So we're judging them on their choices. Um, it's not we, the public. It's just an industry award that happens to be very popular. Um, we don't see the same uproar. I mean, we did have one for Golden Globes, but Golden Globes is even more exclusive and it's even more shadowy than any of the other awards bodies out there. And that's exactly why I feel it's irrelevant because it's not up to me. I'm not choosing those no nominees or winners. So why should I take any notice? Actually, I, the closest can, I can think of to what we're talking here is the Saturn Awards, which would be like the genre um, equivalent of, you know, where genre movies like horror movies, sci-fi, fantasy movies are awarded. And, you know, genre fans and genre industry uh, in, uh, workers are a different beast to the Oscars. So actually, those people are not about um, the glamour and the floss. So they actually know what the public wants. The filmmakers are doing it for the love. So I think there's a distinction between drama and genre. Genre award shows, everyone has the same conscious. They share like a collective conscious thing. So I think it also comes from the fact that, you know, Oscars are expected to be this high concept, high glamour thing. I think that, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not Which quite sure. Which is also problematic, I think. Absolutely, yeah, because I think you lose it out of being the art if you're trying to trying to fix for a very niche kind of space. Why there's a hierarchy? I'm not sure about that. A lot of it also depends on people's taste and preferences, and I think people who did Oscar the longest time, it was mostly the technical achievements of the movie. So the movie that got the most nomination often tended to be the one that is technically strong, and so over the years, I think what has changed again. I'm going to bring it to Harvey Weinstein. He changed the game in. 1999 when he brought the whole element of money into it with Shakespeare in Love, bidding Saving Private Ryan. And then since then, it's taken on a whole other meaning. I mean, I think the way that we consume cinema is different as well. I think what audience expect, perhaps, maybe not from the guy sitting on this sofa, but what audiences generally expect from cinema is different. I'm thinking about these kind of Marvel Universe pictures where they would perhaps, well, the Black Panther did get awarded for some stuff last year. They would perhaps never win uh, some major awards, but yet they are insanely popular. Well, this year the most nominated film is Joker, which is a comic book movie with um, the most, you know, nominations and may win some some awards as well. So, including Best Actor. Yes, I mean, I don't know. Sorry, I have a problem. Even though I'm a huge comic book fan, I have a problem with you know comic book adaptations flooding multiplexes, because it's great if they're being recognized at the award shows, but they're also contributing to the fact that you know. Uh, multi-gender or multi-ethnic um, movies are not making to the uh, theaters Absolutely. because they're, you know, um, cinema multiplexes, etc. They're booking several different screens for these movies. And there was a time when I think Infinity Wars, like the last Avengers one, was on yes. in London. There were no other films showing at local cinemas in North London. Mm -hmm. My friends couldn't see anything else. They could only watch Infinity War for like a month, which is terrifying, isn't it? Really, they have such power over the um, over the cinema. All right, guys, I think that's enough Oscar talk for now. We'll all look forward to Sunday when we'll get the results. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.